Hey everybody, it's Ryan Greenberg from Nemesis Spotlight. Really excited to be here with Durham County Paramedics to talk about a safety thing that really I think is, I know it's being used in a number of different agencies across the country, but we know specifically in Durham, and that's the Medication Administration Cross-Check. And so, guys, can you introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about what this is and how it works? Sure, uh, I'm Sergeant Max Patterson. I'm the Academy Coordinator. And I'm John O'Donnell, one of the Paramedic FTO. Great, so tell me what is a Medication Administration Cross-Check and how's it being used? So the MAC check at its simplest is a procedural checklist that's going to be done by the provider, by at least a minimum of two providers, prior to the administration of any medication. No matter what level um, of your certification, whether it's an EMT providing aspirin to a patient or whether it's a paramedic providing a dentist to a patient, this, the, the structure and the checklist and the flow of the MAC check is going to happen each and every single time. So every time in medication, even if it's being given multiple times to a patient, you're doing this cross-check? Correct. If you're in a cardiac arrest, whether it's the first time administering a medic, uh, epinephrine or the tenth round of epinephrine, you're still going to do it each and every single time because at, you can make a mistake whether it's the first time or the tenth time. And the idea is to cut down on provider errors, cut down on potential um, misadministration of medication to the patient. It's really all about uh, patient safety. So I, I think it'd be best, can you guys demonstrate what this might look like if you were in the back of the ambulance and had to give a medication? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mac check. Ready? I'm going to administer 25 milligrams of Benadryl IV for this patient in anaphylaxis. Okay. Uh, contraindications? None at this time. Okay. Uh, volume? I'm going to give 25 milligrams in 1 ml. Okay. Uh, see it? I agree that is 25 now that I'm able to see it. And go ahead, give it. All right. Thank you very much. Wow. I, I mean, that almost seems scripted. Is it literally that same those same words being used every single time? Yeah, so it's a very it's a very simple structure, and there's a very much, this is the information you're gonna provide at each step. So it's a script, um, and it's, it's something that we train with in order to produce it every single time correctly in a wide variety of cir circumstances. Obviously, this is really kind of calm and relaxed here, but you can imagine under stressful circumstances, it might be harder. So having that script and having that same delivery each and every time helps you recall it in, in any sort of environment. So I know that uh, at least some of your crews are EMT paramedic and that the EMTs aren't necessarily trained on, you know, all the medications and everything else and the contraindication. So how is that handled, especially being an FTO and you're out there training some of your EMTs? How do you handle them, you know, maybe not knowing the contraindications of what is being asked of them? Sure. It's, it's usually still just that verbal pause. It's that thought of what am I going to do and someone giving me the thought process. If they say contraindications, I start thinking of them. Uh, so it's still just that verbal pause, even if they don't know it. And we do try to help teach them over the time, but they're not expected to. It's just that verbal piece in your mind, that, that conversation dialogue. And I, I guess so from the paramedic point of view, when, you know, your field staff are out there, what do they think about that in, you know, doing this and, and how did you make it a part of your culture? So we've been working at it for about two and a half years now, and, and like any time that you're trying to introduce a, a cultural shift or especially a, a new checklist or uh, any sort of change, uh, it's going to take time. So from a system standpoint, we made it clear that this was going to be our expectation and that we were expecting 100% compliance in all circumstances. And we've been unwavering and we've been consistent in that message since the first day that we rolled this out. And was there pushback? Absolutely. Was there kind of delinquency? Yeah, absolutely. We're all human. We don't like change. But what we've seen over time time is that um, it has become part of the culture. It has absolutely become an understanding statement that this is something that we're going to do. And we hold each other accountable, whether it's our district supervisors holding each other accountable, um, whether it's our corporals holding everybody accountable, or just, you know, person to person. Um, this this is the way it is. This is part of the culture. And, and at this point, you know, we're at the point where it's really good, where 100% compliance is pretty much what we get now. So I guess one of the questions would be, well, what if I'm in the back of the ambulance alone and I don't have someone to do a cross check with? How, how would I handle that situation? Well, it's, it's still the verbal communication. We're still going to talk about it. We're still going to speak about it. Um, the, there's actually cameras in some of our newer vehicles and there's been even known people will put the vial to the camera. Um, but, but that's the good point about it is that verbal communication and it does help to see it when best possible. So it's happening even if you're in the back alone, some way or another, there's a safety check going on. Yeah, absolutely. And there, it's been cases where the, you've done it with the patient. And it's just like, hey, we have badge buddies. It's on the walls of our ambulances. So it's, hey, I just need you to read those lines back. I, I know of a number of providers that have done that. And again, as John said, it's that it's just that double check. It's that taking that pause, that extra three, four seconds to make sure that you're getting it right. Um, and, it, you know, it's 
it doesn't matter the circumstances as long as you do it. So uh, we've had some patients kind of do it back and they get a kick out of it because they're getting involved in it um, and they just have to read the flow chart back. And so where can someone find out more about y your county service and maybe even see this policy online? Wh where can someone find out some information on that? Yeah, so DC DCONC.gov is um, the Durham County website, and then you could break off to the EMS site that has a whole bunch of information on there um, about our agency, our protocols, our policies, our procedures. Um, but as well, as you mentioned at the beginning, the MAC check is something that's been done by a number of systems nationwide. So if you went to Google, just did a, serv a certain uh, check for medication administration cross-check, you'll probably find a bunch of the history of it and a bunch of the, the flow charts up there from other agencies as well that have been doing this. Awesome. And so I guess, can we just, you know, now we've spoken a little bit about it, can we see it one more time between the two of you and, and uh, just to give our viewers another shot of it? Absolutely. Mac check. Ready. I want to give 25 milligrams of Benadryl IV for a patient in anaphylaxis. Uh, contraindications. None at this time. Okay. Uh, volume. I'm going to give 25 milligrams in one ml. Okay, uh, can I see it real quick? Because I can. Good, 25, and that is 1 ml, and that's been a drill. Perfect. Go ahead and give it. All right, thank you. That's awesome, guys. Thanks so much for spending the time with us today from uh, with, with the Durham County Paramedics. We really appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time on NEMSA Spotlight. Hope this was helpful, and uh, click the link below if you want to find out more about Durham. We'll make sure to post it up there. Have a great day. Bye now.